What's up, my comic comrades? Today we're continuing Villains Month by giving you the history of one of the more prominent villains within the DC Universe, and that would be the father of Raven, Trigon. For those of you who love the Teen Titans comics or have watched the early 2000s Teen Titans cartoon series, you're very familiar with this character, but today we're gonna break down this demonic conqueror's comic book history. Trigon made his first cameo appearance in the New Teen Titans issue 2 in December of 1980, then made his first full appearance in the New Teen Titans issue 4 in February of 1981. He was created by comic book legends Marv Wolfman and George Perez. If you don't know anything about Trigon, well, first and foremost, glad you're watching today's episode, but to get you up to speed super quickly, he is one of the main antagonists for the Teen Titans, as well as being an adversary for the Justice League. And as I just mentioned, he is the father of Raven. And have I failed to mention that he's a super powerful demon spawn from the dark emotions of Azeroth? Because he is. For those of you wondering, Azrath was an interdimensional realm that exists between the planes of known reality. But with that brief overview out of the way, let's learn about his origin and see where he came from. Trigon came into existence hundreds upon hundreds of years ago, when a group of humans abandoned life on Earth. These humans would form a group of pacifists in the interdimensional world of Azeroth. Being the pacifists they were, they decided to exorcise the dark passions and evil out of their souls and bodies, and then cast it into the nether realms. A very Mortal Kombat of them. Getting rid of multiple people's evil at once and then tossing it all into the same place? What can go wrong? So this evil energy or essence just floated in space for several years before merging into a single physical form. But wouldn't you know it, there was still evil and cults in the universe, so one day a cult summoned this darkness to impregnate a woman. And then nine months later, boom, Trigon was born. But even as an infant, Trigon was not messing around as he slaughtered the cult that was responsible for his birth, as well as killing his own mother. He then went on to conquer his entire planet, and then by the time he was 30, he conquered his entire dimension and, you know, just several million worlds. As centuries went by, Trigon would impregnate many human women to give him children. He did this in hopes that they would become extensions of his own power. The problem was many of his kids rebelled against him, so, you know, he did what demons do. He killed them. The other times, the mothers were like, no, having a half-demon baby is too big of a threat, and I can't deal with this emotionally. So, the mothers killed their infants. But then one day, a woman named Angela, also called Aurella, had got caught up in an occult circle. Said cult tried to summon the devil in a satanic ritual. They failed summoning the devil, however, what they did conjure was something far worse. Trigon, who emerged as a beautiful angel. Once Trigon arrived in the cult circle, he saw Angela, or Aurella, and then turned on that devilish charm. Come on, that was way too easy. It's like low-hanging fruit. He would soon take Angela as his bride, at which point they would do the no-pants dance. But after his seed was planted, he reveals himself to be a demon. Aurella even says, my lover, the one who I thought was like some god sent down to earth to save me, turned out to be evil incarnate. He was vicious, savage, the most hideous creature God could have created if indeed he was created by God and not Satan himself. He then tossed the relic to the side and killed the cult because that's what he does, he's a demon. He then waited for the day for his offspring to join him by his side, which would be Raven. Now, if you want a more detailed origin of Raven's birth and how Trigon impregnated Arella, check out our Origin of Raven episode right here. Anyway, once Raven was around 18, she sensed her father's evil slowly growing inside of her, so she sought out the help of the Justice League, but they refused to help her, sensing the evil inside of her. So instead, Raven used her powers to force Kid Flash, Robin, Changeling, Starfire, Wonder Girl, and so on to help her, creating the new Teen Titans. And this would ultimately lead us down the path of Trigon becoming one of the Teen Titans' greatest adversaries, if not the greatest. This rivalry would give us many of Trigon's best stories. Speaking of, it's now time for story arcs and publication history. Now, believe it or not, there's not that many Trigon stories. Don't get me wrong, there's a decent amount, but it's nothing compared to characters like Darkseid, the Joker, Reverse Flash, and so on and so forth. But easily, one of the most popular and well-known of all Trigon stories is the Trigon Lift storyline from New Teen Titans issue four through six. And that's not shocking at all, considering this is where it all started for Trigon. Literally, his first appearance was within this story, issue four of Teen Titans, volume one. In this story, Raven, in order to defeat her father, who wants to take over Earth and destroy it, has brought characters like Robin, Change, Kid Flash, Starfire, and Wonder Girl together to help her fight against her father, resulting in the formation of the New Teen Titans. Then you have the Terror of Trigon storyline from the 1984 New Teen Titans run, issues one through five to be exact. After Trigon's defeat and imprisonment, years later he regains his power and immediately destroys everyone that resides in the Azrath dimension. He's like, you know what, I'm going to go back to Earth and destroy it, but this time his daughter Raven is by his side. That's right, Trigon was able to corrupt Raven and make her help him take down the Teen Titans, which is pretty jacked up, but also them all at the same time. As far as popularity goes, it's up there with the Trigon Live storyline. I mean, the dude made his daughter evil and attack her best friends. 
That ain't right. But the hits just keep coming with a storyline titled Family Affair. It takes place within the 2008 Titan series, issues one through six, and the Titans East special. Basically what's going down here is Trigon has been presumed dead for years, but guess what? He's not. And not only that, when he returns, he doesn't come alone. This time he comes with his three sons, Jesse, Jacob, and Jared. And of course, they attack the newly formed Titans. It's a very interesting story as Trigon's sons get people to start using the seven deadly sins, which leads to all kinds of chaos and shenanigans. That's right. I just said shenanigans. People should use it more often. Oh, and did I forget to mention Trigon has his sons attack their sister Raven? Yeah, that's a thing too. Then the New 52 gave us A Stranger Among Us, where Trigon literally appears saying to Raven, I missed you, my daughter. For some reason, I don't think he missed her. Basically what's going on here is what's always going down with Trigon. He's searching Earth for his daughter Rachel and or Raven. And the only one willing to help Raven out is the Phantom Stranger. And even though Phantom Stranger is one of the most powerful beings in the DC universe, even he's not gonna have an easy time against Trigon. There's also the dilemma that if Trigon doesn't find his daughter, he's going to unleash an army of demons to destroy Earth. So it's one of those classic tales is one life worth the lives of many. When you really think about it, the story is basically a hide and seek story with an evil demonic twist. And the last story arc I'm gonna mention is Heart of Darkness, which takes place in Teen Titans 23.1. This story reveals his origin, at least the new 52 version of it, but I'm a purist, which is why I gave you guys his OG one. But just like that, friends, it's time to move on to powers and abilities. Trigon is a demon coming from the world of the supernatural, and because of this, he has insane demonic powers. Literally, they're almost immeasurable. Trigon can regenerate from absolutely nothing to the point of absolute immortality. And of course, he also has superhuman strength and durability. He's literally been completely unbothered by the combined attacks of Donna Troy, Cyborg, Starfire, and Changeling. He just finds the entire Titans team annoying. The dude is so strong, he rarely if ever engages in a fist fight or performs any kind of physically straining attack because quite frankly, he doesn't need to. And of course, he also has superhuman reflexes, speed, and agility. He could also fly using telekinesis to make him levitate. The guy can even teleport. He literally just thinks of the destination and he'll appear there. Trigon also possesses omniscience. Literally, his mind is unblocked to the entire universe. Dude straight up has instinct of knowledge and events before they even happen and almost always knows his enemy's move or intention before they make it. And you know how he has four eyes? Well, that's not for no reason. His upper pair of eyes allow him to be aware of nearly everything on the plane he's on. He also possesses reality alteration. He can create, change, and destroy, or even alter reality just by thinking about it. He's literally reshaped entire planets on a whim and has even turned everything on Earth to stone. But I am far from done. He also possesses sorcery, mind control, illusion casting, soul consumption. You know, he could just drain the souls of millions of worlds. He also has energy projection, power bestowal, meaning he can give people superpowers and he has pyrokinesis because he's a demon meaning he can control fire he also has shape-shifting abilities size manipulation and he's immortal again this demon is one of the most powerful beings in all of the dc universe as for reading recommendations check out all the story arcs i was talking about earlier which would be trigon lives in the new teen titans issues four through six the terror of trigon in the new teen titans volume two issues one through five family affair in titans issues one through six from 2008 a stranger among us in phantom stranger issues one through two from the new 52 and heart of darkness from teen titans 23.1 i think that's more than enough to get you all started First up for the week of October 14th, we have Dark Knight's Death Metal Issue 4. Wonder Woman, Batman, and Superman are all trapped in nightmare worlds within the Dark Multiverse. They all need to face down their fiercest foes once again if they hope to accomplish their mission and bring back power capable of stopping the Darkest Night. But what horrors has he unleashed on Earth while they've been locked away? Next in line, we have Amazing Spider-Man Issue 50. Artist Patrick Gleason returns to the Amazing Spider-Man title with the beginning of the Last Remain story. Kindred is stepping out on stage for the first time and Spider-Man is not ready for the havoc that Kindred is going to let loose. Third on this week's buy list is Flash issue 763. In this first issue with new creative team Kevin Shinnick and Clayton Henry, the secret history of Barry Allen's Flash ring is revealed as the Scarlet Speedster tangles with the Trickster in a tale that starts out as fun and games, but ends with a last page cliffhanger. Next up, we have Immortal Hulk issue 38. He's been chained, he's been suppressed, he doesn't even know what's real, but something is reaching through the green door and it wants to hurt Bruce Banner. And when you hurt Banner, the Devil Hulk takes it personally. And finally, we have the anticipated Rorschach issue one by Tom King and Jorge Fornes. It's been 35 years since Ozymandias destroyed the public's trust in heroes once and for all. And since that time, Rorschach has become a divisive cultural icon. So what does it mean when he reappears as an assassin trying to kill a presidential candidate running against President Robert Redford? It's up to one detective to uncover the true identity of the man behind the mask, and it will take him into a web of conspiracies involving alien invasions, disgraced do-gooders, mystic visions, and yes, even comic books. And just like that, my comic comrades, that brings another episode of Variant to a close. But if you enjoyed today, 
today's video, be sure to check out this one right here. And if you like all of our videos on our channel, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. It helps us out. But I will see your lovely faces next time when I talk about all things comics.